um, I, I wouldn't have that choice. I'm not interested in getting into that conversation with people who are, are just so closed-minded about it. And as uh, a, a dear friend of mine said to me, well, everybody's against abortion unless it's for their own daughters. Roe versus Wade passed when I was 12 years old, so I've grown up with reproductive rights my entire life, and yet now my 23-year-old daughter has been stripped of those rights, and I think that that's disgusting, unfair. Um, she deserves bodily autonomy, and I'm very disturbed that this country is going down the path that they're going. I am raising a daughter in West Virginia who has less rights now than her grandmother had, and it's unacceptable. No matter the reason or the decisions made behind the woman's is their fucking business, and regardless of death or life, they shouldn't have to live with something that they don't want, or they can't afford, they can't have, or it could kill them. When you talk to somebody who's experienced an ectopic pregnancy, who was excited about being pregnant, excited about bringing a child into the world, and then an ectopic pregnancy happens and they're forced to terminate, right? They leave that health center, and then they've got people calling them baby killers and throwing dolls at them and, and you know, literally traumatizing them. To me, it's some of the most disgusting things I've ever personally witnessed in my, with my own eyes, and um, it's, I'll do anything I can to fight against that nonsense. I was 15 and the, Jade's uh, biological dad was 23, and um, instead of um, people going, oh my God, this 23-year-old grown man has impregnated this child, it was, um, you know, more shame, shame on me, you know, for getting pregnant. The Kentucky law, as it's written, again, would force if you had a 13-year-old girl who was a victim of rape or incest, who was pregnant, the current trigger law in Kentucky, unless it was literally killing her and you had to save her life, she would have to continue with the pregnancy. There are going to be lots and lots of adverse outcomes um, and women will die. I know for a fact that women will die. I think the future for abortion rights is grim. I think it's going to be very messy. I think we're going to hear more horrible stories um, about the impact of abortion restrictions. Um, maybe people will realize that that's not the world that we want to live in. So we are organizing in my campaign throughout the summer on issues and now uh, our plan all along was to address this head on because, of course, there is an amendment on the ballot to um, essentially cement um, the, the ban on uh, reproductive health care, on abortion, on medically necessary treatment. And so we are going to be organizing on these issues from the place of telling our story, um, not the national talking points or the partisan wedges, but what does it mean to have quality health care? What does it mean to go through the experience of pregnancy and, the, and not have the needs that you uh, you deserve as a human being? What does it mean to make these hard decisions and not have a government that cares about you? So the ballot proposal that's on for November, a yes vote supports amending the Kentucky Constitution and a no vote opposes amending the Kentucky Constitution. But the wording within the ballot is written sort of confusing in a way that I think, you know, when you're in the voting booth, if you haven't already looked at the ballot, it will read, you, you may be confused on what it's saying. So I think it's important everyone vote no on that if they want to protect the access to abortion in Kentucky. Well, people are pissed off and rightfully so, and I hope they take that anger to the ballot box in November. Um, you know, one of our main objectives now is making sure that everybody who supports your right to choose uh, is registered to vote. And if you're not registered, change that immediately. Get registered now. If you're already registered, go check the status of your registration to make sure you weren't purged from the rolls. But we need everybody, uh, everybody that can vote to be at those polls in November. I'm running for office in the 59th district here in West Virginia, and this is one of the main reasons that I chose to run. West Virginia women and women across this country and all pregnant persons deserve better than what they're getting from these literal fascists who are running our country straight into the ground. So I'm here to challenge that. It's, it's really easy to lose hope and faith and compassion, but when you see all of these amazing people 
out that are fighting. Um, I think it, it's a good reminder that in numbers, people really can accomplish quite a bit. I have the t-shirts for all of the marches in the past. I mean, I mean, if need be, we'll pull them out and start wearing them again. You know, it's, um, it's too important an issue. Must be doing something wrong. 